Self-deception and denial left unconfronted and unaddressed guarantees you will relive it and stay stuck. And so that's what I'm trying to point. That's the other thing I point out in this book is I'm, I'm advocating for an update in the definition of denial. Denial has always been classified as a defense mechanism. I couldn't agree more that it starts there. We are so underdeveloped emotionally, we don't have the skills to process what happens to us. And so we deny it. That's healthy. What I think I show convincingly is when left unaddressed, it boomerangs back and becomes the single greatest attack mechanism on the planet today. It is a world consuming atomic bomb that is destroying us all. And so we need to stop calling it a defense mechanism and we need to call it both an initial defense mechanism, but people need to be alerted that it, if it is not addressed, it will destroy you. It will most certainly destroy you and anything and everything you come in contact with. Kenny, I have witnessed how many opportunities were given and everybody's given to face their denial with compassion, empathy, and all the right things. Why is denial a constant coming back to denial so attractive <clears throat> because of the attachment authenticity bond here i am an infant the first seven years of life we're in a theta brainwave state we're not conscious we're in the same brainwave state as hypnosis so most people go i didn't have childhood trauma that's because they were in hypnosis they don't even remember <laughs> how they were traumatized all right by the yeah. time consciousness comes online it's been programmed into them now it's a life or death. There's a, a life-saving mechanism, you know, to minimize, suppress, condone, and justify our parents' poor behavior. We have to do that. We're a child. We're an infant. We're seven to ten years old. How the hell are we going to survive? We can't survive. And so we have to. And so, as even though we're an adult, that's why you know Julian James pointed out ninety-five to ninety-nine percent of our adult life. We're just reliving our subconscious. We're not even conscious adults. And the proof of that is when you show them the truth, they react with all that shame and denial that you're describing. That's a childhood state. They're stuck, detached from their authentic self. They're in the induced shame that their parents dumped into them. And that feeling is so powerful because feelings run our lives, not our thoughts. And that feeling is so big, that trauma is so big, they're transported back to two, five, eight, ten years old, where the feeling is too big. Think of it. All the hurt, like you're in enough presence as to how damaging your childhood was. And think of, could you imagine an eight-year-old getting in the truth about how scary your childhood was? No way. It's too big. Well, because we haven't learned emotional authenticity, we haven't taught as a, as a society, nobody's done the work. And so when it's confronted, we're transported right back there. It's too much. We're, well, soma we're somatically, there. especially, that's the thing. I think some somatics is a topic and an experience that hasn't been discussed almost at all when it comes to psychological healing, even in the world of psychiatry, where they mainly push pills and when Levine, you're talking about Levine has done a great job with that. Peter absolutely. Levine. There are some like Peter Levine and Walker Walker as well, right? That have done fantastic. But I, I say again, we're talking about two names right now. And maybe, maybe if Bessel you know, Vander Coke. I mean, they're but yeah, you're right. they should but be, it's, they should be the voices, not Elaine Aaron pushing, you know, genetic BS. That's what I mean, that it's still pretty new. And it's very few people so far that a lot of people don't know. First of all, they don't know that when you start doing this work, I experienced this myself, by the way, and I've heard it from a friend recently, where when you start getting deep into the trenches of facing your denial and unwinding it and recognizing and growing and healing, it is ex the body is excruciating pain that's felt. Because all of a sudden, we're feeling what hasn't been felt decades in the past, all adding up. And also, so we're, you know, that's a step that's not 
as recognized, right, and, and as uh, acknowledged, and not all people know about. And then those that do know about it and are new to it, it's easy to get scared. I have a friend that told me that, like, they've been doing great with the healing, but once they got to this stage of feeling crazy amounts of pain, where it's like, I see it from, you know, from my witness perspective, I'm like, wow, what a massive breakthrough you're about to go through. But they see it through, dude, I feel like I'm about to die physically. I got, I almost got, I got the flu. I, ah, I that's what you need to get. Because <laughs> that's what's dying is the false attachment you created. The ego, shadow, hearts, all the, that's exactly, it is a death. You have to die. It's, it's, you have just entered fall and the leaves have fallen from the tree and the ground is getting cold and those leaves are decomposing and they're going to, you know, decompose into the soil so that spring new seeds can sprout. Like that's a law of nature. You must die. That's why everything falls off the tree. And that's the experience we all must go through. And I, I'm trying to suggest that we might want to give everyone permission and make that normalized societal behavior that this is fact. We all must do this. And the old messaging of, oh, the past is in the past. Oh, it doesn't. All those things. Um, that's how the tree dies. And that's why. Well, it's the change of the seasons. Yeah. But I'll, I'll add, I'll add. I'll add to this, Kenny, which is this also comes from number one, realizing that when we're going through that pain, the, the body pain, a lot of us don't really know how to take care of ourselves or have gotten the messages of not taking care of ourselves is good. Like, no offense to the, you know, the, the people that love David Coggins, but I'm really against his uh, his mentality of punish the body to grow kind of, you know, he's in here, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah, we talked about them, but um, but very again, lovingly. You know, what's that? But very lovingly, not just yeah, absolutely. Here's the thing: I see with everybody, it's related to what you said about empaths. From the trauma comes a virtue, but also a from the self deception that comes from the trauma, a way in which we sabotage. Right, so it can be a double edged sword. We can, it's it's like you say in your first book, Journey to Success, are you leveraging your trauma to live your best life or are you unintentionally having it get you back to your worst day, right? Self-deception and denial left unconfronted and unaddressed guarantees you will relive it and stay stuck. And so that's what I'm trying to point, that's the other thing I point out in this book is I'm I'm advocating for an update in the definition of denial. Denial has always been classified as a defense mechanism. I couldn't agree more that it starts there. We are so underdeveloped emotionally, we don't have the skills to process what happens to us, and so we deny it. That's healthy. What I think I show convincingly is when left unaddressed, it boomerangs back and becomes the single greatest attack mechanism on the planet today. It is a world consuming atomic bomb that is destroying us all. And so we need to stop calling it a defense mechanism and we need to call it both an initial defense mechanism, but people need to be alerted that it, if it is not addressed, it will destroy you. It will most certainly destroy you and anything and everything you come in contact with. And so I don't just point that out. I also show the process of how to learn to start confronting it and so that it doesn't destroy you anymore. But I, I think I've come up with some really good processes that make it very clear how to confront your, it's not difficult to do. The processes are very straightforward and simple um, and they'll, map, they'll get you into truth like, like immediately. There are a lot of processes I I suggest that I think might be very helpful in the psychology field, um, not not just coaching, but based knowledge in psychology 